Hello, everybody! been afraid, but I've learned to have trust and to look at the positive things in life. That's right, Ollie. Last time, Ollie was unmercifully teased by his brothers. No! Come on, guys! Please don't throw me down the well! No! But they changed their tune when he was selected to take Jesus into Jerusalem. I'm sure he's the one. The Master's chosen him. But when Jesus was crucified, Ollie was so sad he wouldn't eat, and he grew weaker and weaker. Elizabeth prayed for him, but nothing seemed to work. Ollie, you've got to get up and eat. It's been three days and you haven't taken a bite of anything. I know you're sad about Jesus. We all are. But please, I'll be even sadder if you die. And if you don't eat, you will die. Here are some carrots. I know they are your favorite. Eat, my little one, and weep no more. Death has had no power over me. In my father's house. Everyone on the farm in Bethany had heard about a man in Jerusalem named Stephen. It was said he could work miracles, and a plan was made by Farmer John and his wife to take Elizabeth's little brother Jehu into Jerusalem to try and find a cure for his crippled leg. But much more happened to Ollie than he had bargained for. In this tale we call Road to Damascus.
This hybrid gun is good. Ali is to find. Damascus road can be so hard when people are unkind. They're so Jehu can ride you without falling off. Aren't you a little young to be going to Jerusalem? Now just leave her alone, John. You know Rebecca's meeting her at the crossroads. Besides, Ollie's already been there and he knows the way pretty well. She won't get lost. Here, give me a hand with little Jehu. There you go. We'll be home soon, Daddy. Don't worry about me. Come on, Ollie, let's go. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they couldn't get through the crowd to where Stephen was speaking. Ali helped push them through. Move out of the way. Make room. Make room. Make room. Men of Israel, God always accompanies his word with signs and wonders. Even the blind receive sight and the lame walk. Come on, Ali. Let's bring Jehu up. Hey, hey, my foot, watch out. Ow, ow. Lower, lower, lower. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, man. What's this donkey doing here? What have we here? Oh, it's you, Elizabeth. What have you brought? It's my brother Jehu. He can't walk or run or play with the other children. My mother said you could pray for him. I would love to, but not now. Look, the temple guards are coming. Make way. Step aside. Make way!
I have papers to have you arrested for spreading dissension and blasphemy and trying to lay upon all of us the blood of this man Jesus, whom you call the Son of God. Please, kind sir, let him pray for my brother first. We've come all the way from Bethany, and we believe Stephen can heal him. Only Jesus can heal my child through the power of his spirit. Little Jehu, jump down, the Lord has healed you. Enough of this nonsense. Away with him. Hey! Look at me! My legs! They're healed! Thank you, Lord! Stephen, my little brother has never been able to walk before. Don't you see? It's a miracle. That night, Elizabeth, Rebecca, and Jehu left Ollie in a stable by the inn while they waited to see what would happen to Stephen. Ollie met another donkey and told him the story of Jesus and how Farmer John's son, Jehu, was healed that very day. That is a beautiful story, Ollie. I just wish God cared about me. What's your name? Benji. Ollie, say, uh, you're not the donkey that uh, got to carry Jesus, are you? Yes, I just brought my master's youngest, and Stephen healed him right before Saul took him away. That Saul's a bad fellow. He treats everyone really bad, even his animals. On his last donkey, he rode so hard they'll have to put that boy out to pasture. How do you know so much about him? Well, how was his donkey? The next morning, Stephen was taken outside the city and stoned to death. 
Saul went to the stable looking for his donkey. He was heading for Damascus where he would arrest and kill more followers of Jesus. There, fetch me my donkey. I must be off to Damascus. I'm sorry, but your donkey is nearly lame. I don't think he could get you even out of the city in his poor condition. What about this one? He'll do just fine. That belongs to some of the guests. Are you questioning an official of the temple? No, I'm not questioning you. It's just not mine to sell. There are more than enough denarii here. Now saddle him up. All right. He answers to the name of Ali. Saul took Ali against his will, and they began the long journey to Damascus. Ali was so sad at being taken away from Elizabeth and Jehu that after a while he grew weary and began to move very slowly. Saul was enraged. You small white misfit, hurry or my lash will make your behind really sore. Now get! Ali was exhausted and ready to collapse under Saul's weight. He called out to God to help him out of his misery. this Lord. I can't see him. It is I, Jesus. Go into Damascus and you will be told what to do. Ollie, come here. Let me lean against you. Lead me into the city. I'm sorry I've been so cruel to you, Ollie. Please forgive me. Forgive me. 
Saul was now totally blind and leaned on Ollie for support. They made their way into Damascus to wait for another message from Jesus. Saul was taken to the house of Ananias. So the Lord Jesus has sent me here so that you might see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I can see. It's like scales have been taken off of my eyes. I brought him after he was blinded on Damascus Road. But now I'm sure wish I could go. <laughs> Don't be sad. Be happy. Damascus is a nice city. Where are you from anyway? My master is from Bethany. Who knows? Maybe your master will come back and rescue you. Months passed, and Saul's preaching stirred up the synagogue leaders to hatred. They planned on taking Saul's life. Ali remained in Damascus, more and more homesick for everyone back in Bethany. He even found himself missing his three brothers, despite the way they had treated him. Will Ollie ever get back home? Will Elizabeth find him? Come back next time and find out. Thank you, Mr. Narrator. And now it's time once again for Farmer John's Corner. see you again. You know, I was noticing that Donkey Ollie seems to do a lot of traveling. Granted, a lot of it is against his will, but still, I say that when you go somewhere, you should have a plan. You should be prepared. And part of that means you need to have a map. Oh. I'll go get mine. Now this is a pretty standard map. All the states use them. It's, it's pretty natural. It's got rivers and lakes and streams and, and oceans and, and mountains. You can even see the contours on them and you can see the roads going everywhere. But this, this is a map. This, this is, this is, this is my map. <laughs> I've had this one for years. I love this map. It's old, but it's beautiful. It shows everything. It shows all 48 states. Aren't there 50 it, states? Well, yes. Now there are 50 states. Uh, everybody, this is my neighbor, Mr. Budinski. <laughs> Mr. Budinski, yes, you're absolutely right. There are now 50 states. But as I said, this is an old map. It's a beautiful map. It shows all the contours. There's it no shows freeways. The... No, <laughs> it's an old map. Is that a railroad? Oh, yes. I, I love railroads. I love to travel on them. On them. Look at this. Watch. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> it's a special map. Ooh, a special map. Can I borrow this? Well, I, I, I guess you oh, could. Come on, come on, please. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you can borrow it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Helga, look what you I got! Like you borrowed my ladder, and my lawn tractor, and, and my hedge trimmers. And I need to borrow this, too. Okay. <laughs> now, back to this map. You'll notice that it has something on here that's called a compass rose. This shows you where north, south, east, and west are on the map. And north is almost always to the top of the map. When I go traveling, I take things with me. And some of the things I take with me 
or so that I can be entertained while I'm traveling along. And you might want to prepare something very similar to this. Now in here I have things like oh, ooh, there peanuts and 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 almonds. There's all sorts of food. You have oranges. You have water and oh, cool shades. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> uh, what else do we have in here? Oh, we've got little things you can play with. So it. Oh wow! Look at that. Whoa! Isn't that interesting? And ooh, if it gets too warm. Ooh, kazoo. And in case there are any problems, you have some little bandages and a dinosaur to play with. Dinosaur. Oh. Oh. Well, why don't you bring in some important things like friends? Oh, I got friends. A friend. are... I got. A friend. Don't you think he's a little big? Oh. Wouldn't you rather have like this one? Thank you. Uh, well, when traveling, you could always do what Mr. Beninsky does. 104 telephone poles, 105 te Hey, where are we going? I have no idea. Ah, butters, I lost count. One telephone pole, two telephone poles, three telephone poles, four telephone poles, five telephone poles. Ooh, six telephone poles. Seven telephone poles. Eight telephone poles. In our next episode, Ollie tries to sneak out of Damascus to save Saul's life. Then he's captured by thieves and he might never see his family again. That's next time on The Adventures of Donkey Ollie. See you again next time. Bye now.